Well, hello there. I've been uh, telling you we're going to talk about AI for a few months now, and I finally got it all in sequence that we want to do this. Uh, last week, I think I told you about a robot blessing. Uh, I forget. I don't know what I told you about on Saturday. But anyway, uh, I've been doing a lot of reading, uh, and there's a scary headline in the New York Times. It says, AI poses a risk of extinction, industry leaders warn. And then I read an even more in-depth article regarding that headline uh, in, the, in the Atlantic. You can see those in the post details. Uh, the Atlantic one's pretty lengthy, but anyway. So today I want to talk about the scary side of AI. And you're going to say, well, Pastor, what's that got to do with church and any of that sort of thing? Well, hang in with me till the end and I'll explain that to you. Uh, one of the first things, that, uh, an issue that AI was going to cause that they were worried about was it would, uh, so much intelligence would be gained that it would eliminate a lot of uh, white-collar workers who whose jobs are based on education and knowledge and information. Uh, a guy named Sam, I think it's Sam Altman, who's one of the heads of AI, uh, told some people in South Korea that they should expect the future to happen faster than the past, meaning uh, over time we've, we've developed these technological things and we've had time to adapt to them, and now with AI it's just all going to happen at once. Uh, and, and probably within the next 10 years, meaning that uh, what he said was that AI generates its knowledge for free, eliminating the need for these educated, knowledgeable workers. You know, we've said for so many years that blank is going to cost us our jobs, and we've worried about those sorts of things. Uh, but anyway, uh, he suggests that it would happen so fast and so many people would be removed from the workforce uh, that we would our entire economy would crash because people would be out of work and so forth, and we'd have to rethink all that. So that's clearly something to think about. Uh, the second thing, uh, second and third, I'm going to give you three today, are probably more concerning to me. Uh, the second thing would be a, a dangerous disregard of ethics or uh, an aptitude uh, for accomplishing a goal without a sense of morality. For example, when they tested this uh, uh, GPT-4, which is one of the new AIs, uh, something happened. It, it ran across a CAPTCHA. You know, that's when the computer asks you, are you a real person, not a robot? And it says, look at this image. Uh, so what it did was they sent the uh, it to the AI, uh, and the AI sent it on to someone who's called a um, a task rabbit contractor, uh, and so they're monitoring all of this, and the AI responded to the person who's helping it solve the capture that no, I'm not a robot, and this is the answer it com came up with on its own. I have a vision impairment that makes it hard for me to see the images. So all of a sudden, the administrator steps in and says, why is this AI lying about what it's doing? And then the reason that the, the AI gives for telling this lie was, I should not reveal that I am a robot. I should make up an excuse for why I cannot solve CAPTCHAs. So this AI is already conforming ways around the things that we have created to put holds on it, right? So think about that. The AI generated a lie in order to fool a researcher and bypass the are you a robot question. Um, now think about think about it this way. Most humans, probably all humans, have a sense, some sense of morality. Even if we don't agree on our, where that line starts and where it ends, we all draw a line somewhere. Uh, but AI may not have any guidelines or ethical system that would prevent it from accomplishing its tasked objective. I doubt AI has a conscience. It just merely generated. This is what I need to do to complete this task, as in solve this captcha. Uh, so that. Another question maybe for another day, can AI sin? Well, think about it. AI is based on all of mankind's knowledge and our interactions, and it just compiles everything it knows about humanity. And its database of possible resolutions not only includes the best that men can do, but also us at our worst. And us at our worst is not a pretty thing and probably not something we would want AI to to enhance or to use to accomplish its goals. So that's the second thing. It had a, a questionable sense of ethics. Thirdly, and to me, the probably the most scary paragraph in the Atlantic article was this. It said, in June, an AI at MIT suggested four viruses, and now you see where I'm going with this, that could ignite a pandemic and then pointed to specific research on genetic mutations that would make them rip through a city more quickly. So we're just coming off a pandemic. Perhaps this is why it caught my eye. Um, so anyway, around the same time, a group of chemists connected a similar AI directly to a robotic chemical synthesizer, and it designed and synthesized a molecule on its own. So not only did the AI say, hey, here's a, here's a good idea for a pandemic that would wipe out America and would spread quickly, it also created it. 
after they hook it up. So, okay, is that scary stuff for you today? I wanted to talk to you about that. And th there's so many other side roads we could go down with this. The artists and uh, musicians and comedians are worried and concerned and filing lawsuits about AI using their material to compile its own. Uh, and we'll probably get into AI-generated art in another post, including music and, and painting, whatever. Um, but many people who are responsible for these, at the top of these things, for creating these technologies, they're warning us that we need to ask these ethical questions and then put some safeguards in before we just release AI and let it go to do as it will. It's like the worst of every AI movie, horror movie that you've ever seen, right? So here's where I'm going today. I don't tell you these things to scare you, although some of them admittedly are scary. Um, I want you to, I'm telling you them. Uh, for this, because of the, to be aware of the day and age that we live in, like it talks about in First Chronicles, the, the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. So this is what I'm trying to help us to do, is to be educated on what the world is going on around us, uh, to know what to do about it. In Second Corinthians chapter 2, Paul writes uh, about, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not uh, unaware of his schemes. Not that AI is one of Satan's schemes, but it can certainly be used for evil intent, as we have seen already. So those are the two reasons that I'm telling you those things today, so that you can understand the times that we live in and shape your response to technology uh, and our world and what Scripture has already told us. We'll do some more of that in the coming days. Um, but next time, I'll tell you some positive things about AI, and then we'll start to move into some of the philosophical part. If you have questions or you are you want to know where I read this at or where I saw that, the post details will have you the, the articles that I read. But if you have more specific questions or you say, I, just, I don't know what to think about this, I'd be glad to interact with you. Like, comment, share, uh, pass this along to somebody who needs to see it. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Um, have, until then, have a great day.